Yes. So it's week 11, um, and we're kind of in the home stretch. So we've actually only got three more classes together before our final. So we're going to cover unit testing this week and next week. Um, we'll cover Web API briefly in our last class, and then our final exam um, three weeks from now on December 14th in class. Well, Yulia, if you can make that happen, I'll come and visit. So let's jump in. <clears throat> Actually, what we're going to do, <laughs> excuse me. I should probably, sorry, update this. It's no longer called Assignment 2 Part 2. We're going to go over Assignment 4. And then we're going to kind of look at unit testing first from a high level. Uh, we're going to look at the structure of unit testing. We're going to review dependency injection. We're going to look at how we can mock up our database while we're testing. And then we're actually going to create and run some unit tests against a couple of controllers. So I want to look at assignment four first. Um, it's, it's only worth 10% of your grade. You have two weeks to do it. Um, you will be able to start the assignment after class today if you like. You probably won't be able to finish it in its entirety. Um, So you can get it started, but you'll need some of what we're going to cover in next week's class. So next week in class, we're going to do a lab. That lab will be for marks. It's going to be working in groups to do that lab. And then the work you do in your lab is going to help you finish the assignment as well. So all you have to do is submit your GitHub link. You do not have to deploy your site to Azure or Smarter ASP for assignment four because we're just doing unit testing and I need to run the unit test locally. So I will just need to do a repository, which I'll download. Uh, just a warning, I will, we will be you know, doing unit tests in class with our Global Grub shop. You can use that code that gets posted to GitHub as reference, but the idea is not just to strictly copy and paste and do a find and replace for the assignment. I'm not asking you to write lots of unit tests but I am asking you to actually write the test yourselves instead of simply doing a copy paste. So in your existing project, you already have one solution. You're going to add a new project that's going to be a unit testing project into your existing assignment solution. You're going to create a test class for one of your controllers. So you have everyone has at least two controllers in their assignment. You don't have to unit test both of them. This is the unit test one of them. And then you will need to write a suite of unit tests for any one of the following methods. Okay, so we've got all these methods in our scaffolded controllers. You do not have to unit test all of them. To write all the unit tests you would need for all these methods, you'd need something like 25 to 30 unit tests. I'm not asking you to do that. So you pick one of these methods and you're gonna write a separate unit test for each outcome that can occur in the method you choose. So if three things could happen inside the method you pick, you need to write three unit tests. So depending on the method, you should need to write somewhere between three and five unit tests. And you can pick which method you're going to test. I've given you a few hints here these will make a little more sense as we go through our lesson today and next week. And so one of them is wherever we have return view statements, we're going to need to actually pass the view name as a string, as a parameter. And we'll see why today. And if you are going to unit test either the create post or the edit post, which are probably the most challenging, one of the possible conditions in those methods is that the model posted is invalid. So the, like the user fills out our form, but they have validation errors. They put in either bad data or there's required data that's missing. To test that in our unit test, we can use this line of code. 
So we're not going to do it this week, but I'll come back and refer to that next week during our in-class lab. Okay, so this is how you simulate that condition. And just commit your code to GitHub. Just make a minimum of two commits. I don't care about the dates. So the assignment is out of 11 marks, it's worth 10%. Okay, you have two weeks to do it. So the setup piece you'll be able to do by the end of class today. Um, but probably to complete writing the unit test, you'll probably want to complete that after next week's class because the lab is designed to help you with the assignment. So I'll make some references to some of these requirements again in class next week. Does anybody have any questions? Yes, Mahir. There will be an in-class lab for next week. I'd like you to do it in groups. Um, I will assign people groups. If somebody really wants to do it on their own instead and do all the work by themselves, I will consider that. I'm not saying yes, but I will consider it. But yes, we will do a lab. So the lab is designed to help you. Um, so we're gonna write, do our project setup and write some unit tests together today. We're gonna unit test our index and details methods. Basically what we're gonna do next week, instead of writing all of these unit tests together, I will assign each group one method or two methods and that group will write the unit tests together for the lab. Okay, so it's a way of practicing with our Global Grub application and having other people to help you and then what you do in the assignment would actually be very similar, but you're going to have to do that on your own. Does anybody else have any questions about assignment four? Okay, thanks, Eureka. All right. We've gone over assignment four. Um, now, I know that unit testing is something that shouldn't be completely brand new um, to you. I believe in one of your Java courses, you probably did a little bit of unit testing with JUnit. Is that right? Okay, and did, did you have Jarrett as your instructor for that? Okay, that's good. Um, so we wanna look at unit testing within a .NET environment. So if you've already done unit testing, um, how would you, in really simple terms, what is a unit test? This would be a really good question to ask uh, in a job interview for a junior developer. What is unit testing in simple terms? Okay, yes, Mayor, definitely it involves validation. So making sure that our inputs we get in our application are acceptable. That's part of it. Anything else we could say about unit testing? Okay, thanks, Ned. We're testing functionality before deployment. Right? We want to find those errors and fix them rather than have our end users finding a lot of errors, losing confidence in our application. We're checking, Amar, that's a really good point. We're checking whether we get the output we expect. And so you know, say, okay, yeah, we're checking borderline things. Okay. If we think of, yeah, we're ensuring the output of each scenario. Thanks, Eureka. So that's a really important point, right? Um, Let's actually open up our Global Grub application. Eureka, I'm going to come back to that, that point in just a minute. So let's open it up and get it running. How big are unit tests? Like, are we testing at the application level? 
Are we taste testing at like a component level or a class level? Um, are we testing at a really granular level? Um, is it should be bigger than the code itself? Yeah, okay, so unit tests are definitely, they're designed, they're targeted, they're quite granular, they're at the method level. Okay? So when we're unit testing, we typically are testing one method, and as Eureka mentioned, we wanna test each possible outcome that that method has. Okay? So let's look here, for example, let's got my orders controller, so we scaffolded this last week. Let's take a quick look at our details method. For example, how many execution paths, how many different outcomes are there within our details method? A Visual Studio scaffold for us. Yeah, that's right. Now there's three. So what are the three different possibilities when we call this method? Okay, so the first possibility is we've called details, but our ID parameter is null. In that case, we're going to send back some kind of 404 response. Yep, validate, or as my gender said, we've got a valid ID. In this case, we've got an invalid ID. So we have an ID, we can run our query, but when we fetch it, the result is null. In this case, again, we're returning some kind of 404. And then the last scenario, is here we actually do have an order. So how many unit tests do you think we should write here if we wanted to fully test? Yeah, I would agree now. I would think we would want one each. So we're going to write one test where we call details and we don't pass in an ID. And we want to check that we get some sort of error 404 response. We want to write a separate test where we pass in an ID, but we know that ID doesn't exist in our database. So we could pass in like a negative one, for example. Um, and then our final scenario, we want to pass an ID that does exist and we want to check that we get an order object and that it's the correct order object that matches that comes back. And so we'll want to write at least three tests. We're probably actually going to write four tests because we might also want to check that the correct view is returned. So we might actually write a separate test for this. So unit testing, it's at a very small scope, a very granular level within a method one test typically will test for one outcome. So this is why in your assignment, and I'll kind of come back and refer to the assignments in the class, I'm suggesting, you know, you'll need to decide based on the method you pick exactly how many tests you need. You need, right? So you need a separate test for each outcome that occurs in the method. So if unit tests just step, stepping back for just a second, if unit tests are at this really granular level, there are some other kinds of tests available. What other kinds of testing might we do in addition to unit testing? We're going to focus on unit testing for now, but there are other kinds as well. If we had a full quality assurance course, we would look at other kinds of testing as well. Have you heard of any other types of software testing? Okay, we've got regression testing. Dhruv, uh, what is regression testing? Scott mentioned user testing. Yep. We've got Automation testing, yes, stress and performance. So, you know, our app runs fine with one user, but what happens if we simulate having, you know, thousands of concurrent requests, as Jennifer said? 
And Tila is talking about performance or benchmark testing, right? So maybe we're testing speed. Um, Majinder, we don't typically test the class. We, we typically will test the methods themselves. Yeah, Fatima, we've got integration testing. What um, What's integration testing? Yes, Attila, it is. So what are what are integration and regression testing? How are they different from unit testing? <laughs> we got coffee for that now. Anybody have an idea? Again, right. Okay, so Drew, that's exactly what regression testing is, right? We're trying to make sure when we make changes that it doesn't affect existing functionality. And unit testing actually helps with that. And we'll, we'll see why. And what about integration testing? How is integration testing different from, let's say, unit testing? Amar, you're getting warmer. So if we think about our Global Grub app, which I could get running, if we were gonna do integration testing here, what elements, what would be in the group of things we were testing? Um, could be. Okay, that's fine. You're, I appreciate you taking a guess. So what are we integrating, right? We've got a web application. Our web application actually integrates some other components and services. Right? We've actually integrated three other components that live, are external to our web application right now. That's one, the database. So making sure our interactions with SQL Server are correct. That's one form. The Google sign in with OAuth and, as Manjinder said, the Stripe service. So testing those things, that's all integration testing, right? So it's kind of at the component level, component or services or systems or APIs. How does our application integrate with any of these other services we've brought in? Right? So it's almost the opposite end. It's at the kind of macro end where we're dealing on a component to component level. How does our application integrate with things that are, live outside of it. Unit testing is at the very granular level, one method, one outcome. There are a lot of things that require testing. Here's some good news. Remember this. Software quality assurance is a very underrated place to get your foot in the door. Um, as a software developer. Right now, 2100 jobs for software quality assurance. Uh, and actually, CareDove is an interesting company because a number of our graduates actually work at CareDove, and it's here in Simcoe County. It's just up in Aurelia. So they're actually familiar with our program and our students and what we learn. But this is an excellent place for students or people without a lot of experience to get their foot in the door. And it's also a great place to learn because maybe you're not writing a lot of code as a quality assurance developer. Um, but you're getting to see other people's code. You're learning what good code looks like. You're learning how to test and write better code. Um, and it's an actually really interesting kind of in as here, I want to go work for Sunwing. Maybe they'll give you some free flights as a junior quality assurance analyst. Uh, let's see what, what are they asking for? Okay. Integration testings, performance, user acceptance testing. You'll need, they don't even have any specific technical requirements. 
Uh, this job was posted a couple of weeks ago. Here. So not only will looking at, I mean, there's not only will it help you become a better programmer, um, but there's lots of opportunities. And I will be honest with you, quality assurance is maybe not the most exciting or the sexiest part of software development. Um, here's one with visual .NET testing skills, Visual Studio, okay, SQL Server, .NET, bug tracking tools, one to three years, yeah, who cares? I'd apply for it anyway. So because it's not necessarily the first thing a lot of students think about when they're looking for jobs, but you can see from the number of listings available just how, what the, how big the need is for people who can do quality assurance. Okay. Um, so I would encourage you, don't write off the QA area as a way into the job or the, the industry that you really interest. That's right. <laughs> you got it, Jennifer. And in many places, uh, in many big organizations, they actually, where they, where they outsource their IT development, they actually source one company to do the development and they hire another company completely to do the quality assurance. A friend of mine works as done, run projects for uh, some of the big Canadian banks and a big project, he led the development of their banking mobile app and they hired IBM to do the development. And I think they hired CGI to do the quality assurance. So people were testing the code written by uh, actually a competing partner company. I think it is, Alex. I really do. I mean, if we compare that to, let's just look for, I don't know, web developer. I don't think it's going to be that different. How many jobs? Right? Almost as many jobs for software quality assurance per, currently in Ontario as there are posted for web developers. So I think it is pretty big. Um, actually, I can even show you on his project um, how many QA people he had. It's actually in the document. Bear with me and I can tell you. So here was all the serve, all the components for integration testing. We had a huge team of people. Somewhere in here, I've actually got the slide where he broke down how many people there were, if I can find it. I'll, to, I'll look for it on a break. I think it's in here somewhere. Okay, sorry. Didn't mean to get too far off track. So let's come back to unit testing. So one of the things unit testing helps with, you read this quote from Scott Guthrie, who's a leading .NET developer. And I won't read it to you. I'll give you a minute to read it.
So one of the big benefits of unit testing, not only does it allow us to check our code, as mentioned earlier, before we put it into production, but it also helps prevent changes from breaking things. And this is also related to regression testing. So either an application we're currently working on and we have a working code base, we then want to change it, or an application that's even in production already, and we have to make updates later on down the line when we're not, the we're not as familiar with the code, or maybe the original code base was built by somebody else, we now have to update it. By having a suite of automated unit tests, it gives us this safety net that we can change our code and make sure that all our code that worked originally still behaves as expected. So what we're going to do is we're going to add unit testing into our global grub project. Um, I've put a link up here. It's loosely based on um, this kind of old tutorial series from Visual Studio Magazine, but I've updated it um, for .NET Core. There's also um, a useful tutorial, I'll put the link in the chat, on LinkedIn Learning for a bit more on uh... I'll have to dig out the chat. I think there's I think it was this course. This guy's an excellent developer. He's got a lot of good .NET Core material. So he goes through unit testing in MVC apps. So I'm going to adapt a little bit of what he's done here as well. But this is a good secondary resource. So there's, there are three different commonly used unit testing frameworks um, available with .NET. We're going to use the one that's built right into Visual Studio. It's called MS Test. There's two other popular ones. One is called NUnit. One is called XUnit. Can't remember which one. One of them is actually based on JUnit. So it was it's a, a JetBrains product initially, but they all work similarly. They have Slightly different syntax, um, but kind of the organizing principles between each one of them is, is the same. Um, so I'm just going to close all my tabs here. You can go to Solution Explorer. And I'm just going to actually close up everything. And you'll notice in our Solution Explorer, it says we've got one of one project. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to add a new project into our Visual Studio solution. Um, so I'm going to right-click my solution. I'm going to add a new project. And in the templates, I'm going to search for the word test. It brings up a whole bunch of project templates. I want this one here. It shows up fourth in my list. It's the MS test test project. And notice there's a few different versions because the one is C sharp and one is Visual Basic. So we obviously want an MS test test project. So choose MS test test project in C sharp. For the name, I'll call it Global Grub Tests. So the same as our pro web project name with the suffix of tests. I'm going to target our current .NET 5. I'll create it. So you'll notice our solution now says two of two projects. Right? Here's our web project and our unit testing project. It references the Visual Studio Test Tools unit testing library, and it looks sort of like a normal class with a couple of differences. We have a test class attribute, 
which means that this class is only designed for unit testing. And then we've got one method here that also has a test method decorator. So wherever you see this test method decorator, that means the method directly underneath it is actually a unit test. And we also get this little blue indicator saying the test has not never been run. Yeah, you right click your solution. You're going to choose add new project. And in your template, you search for the word test. And I picked the MS test test project. You could also try to change your project type here to test. That might filter it. You picked C sharp. C sharp and Windows. So it's MS test test project. Um, here, you don't have that. I may have to look later. Um, do a quick search. I haven't encountered that before. So I'm here, do a quick search for MS test, test project template missing from Visual Studio. There may be a component you will need to add to your Visual Studio installation through the installer. But do a quick search on that because off the top of my head, I don't know I would have to search as well. So this tells us that this unit test has never been executed. There's three different icons we'll see here for each unit test. Either a green check mark, meaning the last time the test was executed, it passed. A red X indicating it failed or a blue exclamation mark saying we've never tried this test yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our web project, into the controllers. We're just going to make a really simple controller so we can write a few basic unit tests. So in the web project, I'm going to right click my controllers and I'm going to add an empty controller. So we're going to unit test with this kind of empty dummy controller first, and then we'll unit test in our products controller later. I'm just going to call this one dummies controller. So we're not using this for anything really other than just some very basic tests. And whenever we create even an empty controller, Visual Studio nicely gives us one method called index that returns a view. Right? We didn't have to write any of this code. Visual Studio did it for us. So now we want to unit test this method, and then we'll make some more change. We'll make some changes to the method, and we'll have to write a few other tests as well. Now, normally in a unit test project, if we're going to test a controller, we write a separate test class for each controller. We've already got one test controller here, but I'm going to rename it. So I'm going to right click where it says unit test one. I'm going to change this to dummies controller test. So by convention, the test class would have the same name as the controller it's going to test. It just has the suffix of test at the end. And Visual Studio asks if it also wants me to rename the class name on line six. I'm going to say yes to that. So now. I'm also going to rename this test method. So the standard practice for naming our unit tests is our test name typically starts with the name of the method we want to test. 
and then the scenario or the condition that we want to test for. So we're going to test the index method. Let's say index returns something. So we want to call the index method and we want to make sure that we get some kind of object back. Now, this is not a great unit test, but we're going to start here and then we'll get a little more advanced as we go. So the basic pattern of a unit test would be probably similar to what you did with JUnit. We've got three steps. We've got a range. To set up any objects, variables, or parameters needed to call the method we want to test. Then we've got act. Execute the method. And the last part is an assert statement. Now, not every unit test has this arrange. For some of them, we can just, there, there's, we don't have to do any setup. We could just call the method and evaluate the result. So we're always going to have the act and assert steps. A range we will usually have, occasionally we won't need it. So if we want to call, we want to test this method here and make sure that something is returned in this I action result. What do we need in terms of the arranging? What object, variable, parameters, are we going to need in order to test that method? We're going to need one thing. Yep, thanks, Attila. That's a, a useful way of thinking about it. So given these values, when we do this, then the result is. So what do we need here? in order to try out the index method of our new controller. We need one thing. Do we need an object? Do we need a variable? Do we need a parameter? What's needed inside our arranging? So we're in this class, we want to call the method of another class. Um, good guess, Mangender. No, we don't need a view. I mean, we might expect a view in the assert, but you're kind of one step ahead. Okay, yes. That's right now, we need an instance of our controller. That's right, we need to instantiate an instance of the dummies controller. We can't call this method if we don't have a controller, uh, a controller object. Right, so we're trying to instantiate the dummies controller. This reference doesn't recognize the dummies controller. So what it wants us to do is reference, remember these are in two separate projects, so they're separate DLLs. So what we wanna do is we need to add a reference first to our web project. So I'm gonna accept that reference and that actually does two things. It adds a reference here to our global grub controller namespace and in Solution Explorer, in my web, in my testing project under dependencies and projects, we can now see there's a dependency here. So in order for our unit test project to access anything in the web project, we need to have a project reference as well. So now we can act, create a result variable 
And now I have access, I can call the index method. So we're instantiating our dummies controller, we're calling the index method, and now we're going to assert. And assert has several different methods we can call to check values. So we'll just call is not null on our result. So I'm going to save that. Again, this is not a great unit test. We're not really checking what we got back. We're just making sure that we got something back. So we'll write a few other tests after. So now there's a few, there's several different ways in Visual Studio, different locations and different ways we can actually run the unit test. So one way to do it is if you click on the test menu, open up Test Explorer. So this tells us we have one total test, one test that has not been executed. So you can click Either run, either run button. So I'll click run. And now I get a green check mark saying that when we ran the index return something test, it passed. Now we'll notice a few other things in Visual Studio. In my test class, I now get a green check mark above my test method. If I go back to the dummies controller, it also now says there's one reference to this method. Tells me where it's referenced. And it also shows me that this method has one of one passing tests. I can also go and look, if I click on the test menu again, I know you would have done this with Jarrett, there is code co a code coverage tool. So if I click on test and analyze code coverage, if I open up my global grub DLL. So we've now covered one quarter of 1% of the code. But my dummies controller, it says is 100% covered. I've also got this little button here, second from the right beside the X button that says show code coverage coloring. So when I click it, this is now blue, meaning that the code, this code is fully covered by a unit test. I go and open up one of my other controllers, like let's say the products controller, notice all the code in here, it's all red because we don't have any unit test covering any of these, any of this code. Now, we're going to write a separate second unit test that's going to be a little better. Test, analyze code coverage. And then you have to start drilling down in the hierarchy. Go to the web project. If you are using Visual Studio Community Edition, then I don't think you have the code coverage tool. I think you need professional or enterprise. This is not critical. If you don't have this, that's fine. It won't prevent you from doing your work. It's just kind of a useful tool. It's not essential. So don't worry if you don't have it. There's one other tool I'll show that again, is not available in the community. Through the test menu, they have something called live unit testing. So what this will actually do is as you write tests, it actually will check and indicate whether they're likely to pass or fail even before you do a full test run. So you can turn that off, turn that on or off if you want. I'll turn it on. So it basically three checks here. Right, 
So it tells me, again, not an essential tool, just sort of a useful one. You don't have, okay, did they pass in your test control in your test explorer? Okay, man, and as long as they pass in your test explorer, that's fine. So Alex, under test, you can turn on, if you want, live unit testing. You go to test and live unit testing, there'll be a start option. If you want to turn it on, again, it's not critical. Okay, so if you're on the community edition, you won't have the live unit testing or the code covered op coverage options, it's fine. It's not going to prevent you from writing and running your unit tests. All right, I'm going to upload what we've done so far. Oh, Alex, there's a fix for that. I'll show you that and then we'll take a break. Your enterprise, you have a license through the Azure portal. So if you just go to portal.azure.com, if you click on education and software, find Visual Studio Enterprise, or you can search for it in the bar, search box, just click on it and click view key. So you can copy your product key and then inside of Visual Studio, I think if you go to register visual, yeah, if you go to register Visual Studio, there'll be the option here to just paste in the license key. And then it will not expire. Only one. One method in one controller. All right, folks, I've pushed up to get for now. Uh, let's take a break here. We'll come back at 12.